of course, if you have a smartphone, download the TuneIn Radio app. Take us wherever you're going, which could be to stop by and say hi to Brian Johnson today from the Fulton County Community Foundation. Hey, Brian. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. I don't know if we can say it's quite a beautiful day, but we've uh, needed the rain. Yeah, so, we do. It's been, um, a little, been a little dry out there. It has so. been. So yeah. Did you walk over? Or I did. I did. Video? A little, little misty on did the way. Did bring but an umbrella? Bad. I didn't. Well, there's was, no mist coming it's, back. It's, it's rain. <laughs> well, it's not, it wasn't too bad coming down, and I could jump between the awnings. All so. right. All right. So, but, well, we've got a lot of things going on with the foundation right now. Um, seems like that's kind of a constant anymore, some um, doing good things. So um, some things I'd like to remind people about um, are Fulton County Lilly um, Community Scholarship application is available. Um, that is available online. Um, folks can find that on our website and find the links to um, complete that electronically. Um, our website is nicf.org. Um, still have some time on that. Um, it's not due until January 6th, and this feels kind of weird saying 2016, <laughs> but it is almost that time now. Yes, it so, is. Um, but there are some pieces of information with the, with the scholarship that students will need to be able to complete some information about their academics, about their community. Um, letters of recommendation are also an important part of that. So um, I'd encourage students to look at that if you think you're interested in applying for that. Um, it, it has criteria as far as academics, um, community service. Um, we also have an interview process that the, the finalists go through. But um, it would be good at, even if you're, you're thinking about applying for that, checking that out and seeing if you have the, the information needed for that. Um, because that, that's a scholarship that um, supplies, it supplies full tuition and also a $900 a year book stipend for that's students. A good one. Um, it doesn't include room, room and board, but um, it takes care of all the academic needs of a student. So I encourage students to check that out. Um, I've had a few questions already about the scholarships other than the Lilly, and we're working on getting those online. Um, those probably will be available the very um, early part of December. Um, so you're not late on that. I know I've had a couple people ask me if they missed that timeline. Um, and those generally are not due until the first part of March. Um, so a little bit of time on that. But the Lilly Scholarship is the first one coming up. Again, that deadline is January 6th. Um, so right after students would return from Christmas break. Um, another reminder, um, Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Um, the dues for that are um, due in our office by the end of the year, so December 31st. Um, it's $120 annually for women who want to be a part of that. Um, the neat thing about that organization is we give away half of the dues um, annually to community projects and the other half go to build an endowment fund. It's kind of neat that group started in 2010 with their first membership year in 2011. They've already given away over $29,000 in grants and their endowment fund has grown to over $30,000 and, and continues to grow and um, will continue to give back. So okay. it's wonderful to see what um, one person's $120 turns into five or six thousand dollars in grants. Per Ten bucks year. a month. It is. It is. Ten bucks a month. Thirty-three yeah. cents a day. It may be there that go. half of a cup of coffee or something like <laughs> That's that. Right. So, so um, another big thing that we've got going on right now is, of course, our Lily um, gift phase six. Um, we have um, $500,000 available to match on a dollar-for-dollar -dollar basis to any gifts to our community funds. And, of course, our community funds are ones that make grants throughout the community. Um, we'll speak with a guest that is part of an organization here in a minute that received some of these funds in the past. Okay. Um, but these funds help for current needs in the community, um, things like the preschool project, things like um, Compassionate Health Center, things that are, that are needs in our community. Um, to date, we're between two hundred fifty and three hundred thousand dollar in gift and pledges of our five hundred thousand dollar goal. So, um, just put a plug in for that, a dollar for dollar match um, through March thirty first of two thousand sixteen. Um, so, if you're looking at end of year planning, if you want to sit down with your accountant or financial advisor and say, "Hey, what would a gift cost me?" Um, often, there's some significant tax savings that can be made by making a gift, and also um, we always refer to it as voluntary versus involuntary giving. Um, Uncle Sam will take some, but there's a possibility that you may be able to give a little bit less to Uncle Sam if you give something local and also be able to, 
to um, direct your gift to something that you care about. So I'd encourage folks as you're looking at tax planning and end of year planning to um, inquire and, and it may not be the right time but it may be an opportunity to save some some taxes and also be able to impact an organization or cause locally that that you really care about so um, a wonderful time for that so well we have with us today um, pastor Todd Wilson um, Todd is the the pastor at um, the Kiwana United Methodist Church um, but is also very involved in the Kiwana Community Food Pantry. So welcome, Todd. Thanks, Brian. Um, I guess starting off, tell us a little bit about the Kiwana Community Food Pantry. Well, it really got started about 16 years ago. Cliff Gano, who at that time was the pastor of one of the other local churches, the Church of Christ there in um, Kiwana, and I began looking at some needs in the larger community and talking about how we could meet some of those needs. And the idea came up one day, well, what if we started gathering some food, had some food set aside in case that's a need? And one thing led to another. Eventually, a lot of people got excited about it, and um, we were able to put together what essentially turned out to be a food pantry. Uh, started in one room in the local Methodist church there in Kiwana. Had a lot of community volunteers come in and help us do a little remodeling, build shelving, donated food, and we got started in early 2000 with that project in one room upstairs and uh, hadn't been used for a little while. And uh, people would come there then to the church on a regular basis and be able to receive food if they needed that. That situation continued till approximately 2012 and the situation had become kind of difficult because there were a lot of folks coming in that maybe had some handicapped issues. Um, maybe they weren't f fully physically handicapped but maybe they had knee problems, uh, looking at a knee surgery. Uh, other physical problems and just having difficulty getting up and down the stairs and even not just those recipients of the food pantry benefit but also some of the volunteers that were helping out and so we began looking at what options we had getting to some kind of a handicapped ac accessible facility. That's when two ladies in our community, Beverly Baldwin and Jenny Kay, came into the picture. In 2012, they were attending the Fulton County Leadership Academy and presented a project that would essentially create a new facility, try to make something that was one level, handicapped accessible, larger, so that we could accommodate more food, accommodate more people, and began to really run with that, developed a whole team, around them and eventually applied for a community foundation grant and we received that grant in 2012, the end of 2012. In 2013 we were able to purchase a property there in Kiwana. I was really excited about that as well because it was an older building that was starting to run down and gave us an opportunity not only to create a community service for the larger community, but also do a little renovation for the whole community as well. I reclaimed one of those old buildings with a lot of history in the community. And so as we uh, received that grant money, $30,000 from the Community Foundation, uh, began looking at doing some remodeling, purchased the property right there in Kiwana, and it really was an amazing situation. As I've shared with you before, it was like a seed money. You know, we needed double that or more to actually complete the project and get everything up and running, but once we received those funds and were able to start work on the building, people came out of the woodwork, uh, local families, individuals, local corporations and, and factories, churches, other groups began to donate money, donate time, uh, labor, work, whatever the case may be. 
and within a matter of about two months, we were able to get everything finished, remodeled, uh, new furnace installed, new roof on the facility, uh, painted, new flooring, everything. So much was donated in terms of time, materials by people, and it just was an amazing miracle, really. Uh, within just a couple of months, I think by late April, early May, uh, we were able to open that to the community and have a fully functional handicap accessible facility with probably 10 times the space that we had before and, and began filling it up with food donations and having an opportunity to share with the community. Well, and you mentioned the donations. Um, maybe talk a little bit about the services that the, the pantry provides as well as um, just how is the pantry supported? Okay. Uh, right now, we essentially are an emergency food pantry. And what that means is we receive people no more than once a month. Uh, if a family comes in that has a need, then we will sign them up, we'll, we'll look at their information, and we'll give them some food initially that hopefully will take care of them. Uh, should be enough for about a week if they, if they use it wisely. But we initially, from the very beginning, did not want to become an organization that created dependency. So we didn't want to have people coming in every week depending on us for their meal. Uh, we wanted to be there for an emergency situation in case people were down on their luck. You know, we have a lot of folks in our community, as you well know, we would call the working poor that are, are out there and really trying to make ends meet, but sometimes they come up a little short once in a while. And so uh, we offer that service once a month. The family can come in and, and receive a fairly good sized portion of food. And we also have services available to teach them even how to prepare that as well. And uh, they are then able to come back once a month. So it, it's not a situation where they're going to be uh, becoming dependent upon the food pantry itself. As far as donations go, we still receive a lot of private donations. A lot of local farmers have really been a blessing to us in terms of donating cash, in terms of donating food products, maybe they have a, a steer that they've butchered and they bring in the meat and donate that meat to the food pantry so that we can give that out to other people. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention is any money donations that come in go straight to food. Uh, we're a completely volunteer organization. Um, there's no staff costs involved. In fact, uh, some of our volunteers have created an annual golf outing to cover operational expenses and we have that every July run it through Pondview Golf Course so if you have a chance come out and join us this next year but that has been such a tremendous success that that covers all of our operating expenses for the entire year and so any food donations money donations that come in go directly back out to the community and go to serve those public folks that are in need. And um, some of the areas that you serve, can you maybe talk to us about that? Because I know you work with some of the other pantries in the area to, to make sure we get the whole county covered. Yes. Yeah, we're in a cooperative effort with United Ministries Food Pantry. Uh, United Ministries covers uh, essentially the six townships on this side, uh, central and, and east part of Fulton County. And we've taken under our wing, the three westernmost townships, Wayne Union and Abenabi. And so if folks come in from other areas, we will direct them back to the United Ministries Pantry. And if folks come in there from our areas, they will say, no, you need to go touch base with these folks, and they give them our contact information. That way we don't double up. And we really, again, wanted to create a situation where people receive the help and the benefit they need, but we also recognize sometimes there are those out there that try to milk the system, yeah. and we wanted to avoid that. Yeah. And maybe give us an idea of the numbers that 
um, the food pantry has served. Absolutely. Um, 2012, before we really were up and running, we had 279 visits in, in that calendar year, servicing 73 families in our area. That jumped significantly after we had the new facility. We had 356 visits serving 86 families, so we added 13 families that very next year. Um, in 2014 then, that jumped again to 92 families. We had 448 visits. Now, during that time, uh, for example, in 2013, on top of the food donations that we received from local churches, local businesses, local individuals and families, we also received $5,900 worth of cash that we immediately went out, spent, and bought food. And so we've distributed probably in the neighborhood of $10,000 worth of food in the last, per year, in the last couple of years. What are your hours, Todd? Uh, right now, we have official hours where people can come in on Thursday morning from 9 to 11. If there's a need outside of those official times, there are some folks to call that they can say, hey, I have an emergency. Can you deliver to me? And we actually have volunteers that will go out to the house if they can't make it in, if it's a handicap situation or a person that is bedridden, or they can arrange to meet at the food pantry okay. facility itself. Sure. So if somebody is, is needing these services, obviously get in contact with you. If somebody's out there listening and saying, hey, I, this sounds like a neat organization, I want to help out in any way, whether it be a volunteer, donations, mm -hmm. how would they go about doing that? They can call the Kiwana Methodist Church, 574-653-2201. Uh, and we can put anyone in touch with either the services they need or connect them with a the volunteer organization. We have a, a board that runs the food pantry locally, made up of members from the entire community involved. Uh, there are seven different businesses, local corporations, factories that are connected, 11 different community churches, not just in Kiwana, but beyond Kiwana, as well as unconnected individuals, those that aren't necessarily affiliated with either of those groups in the community. Excellent. And wonderful. Well, I'd like to um, say thank you to you and to everybody involved. It's been wonderful from the Community Foundation's perspective to see that how this project, like you said, it got started and then it just seemed like it kept rolling and growing and improving mm -hmm. and, and has been a wonderful facility. So um, thank you to you and to all the folks that have been involved, whether board members, volunteers, donations, um, that have provided um, this service. Once, once again, why don't you give us that contact information if somebody's out there and wants to be able to help in any way. Sure. That phone number is 574-653-2201. Or that's the uh, Kiwana Methodist Church office number. You can leave a message if we're not in, and we'll make sure you get connected with those volunteers at the Kiwana Community Food Pantry. The address for the building is 114 South Toner Street, right there in Kiwana. Uh, if they want to stop by, folks need help on a Thursday or want to volunteer, feel free to stop by on a Thursday from 9 to 11 or give us a call. All right. Brian, how do folks get in touch with you? Well, if folks have any questions about anything that we talked about today, you can get us at the Community Foundation. Um, of course, our website, which is where things like our scholarship, um, applications like the Lily, or information about the Women's Giving Circle um, at nicf.org. You can find us on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, give us a call here in Rochester at 224-3223 or stop by our office at 715 Main Street. And, um, tell us all the wonderful ideas or t just talk to us about how we can help make Fulton County a better place to live. All right. Brian Johnson, thanks very much. Todd Wilson, thank you very much thank for you, being Tom. here.